We're here with the final day coverage of the MVC championship where fifth seed Bradley took on sixth seed Northern Iowa and Bradley ultimately came out on top. I'm here with my two analysts, Connor Bergen and Eric Moran. So tell me more about those final two minutes in the game. Well, this was a championship game full of drama. The real pivotal sequence came with in the 158 mark uh, of the second half. After trailing the entire game, Bradley mounted a comeback and were only down by one point just under two minutes left. That was when Northern Iowa forward Luke McDonald was car called for a personal foul. But not only that, he was called for a dead ball technical foul for being too physical uh, with the Bradley player after the whistle. This gave Bradley two free throws for the foul and then two free throws uh, for the technical and the ball back. Bradley converted all four free throws and then Elijah Childs scored in the paint on that next possession. It was a six point swing. Bradley went from being down by one point uh, with two minutes left to up five. And then actually to Northern Iowa's credit, they kept their heads in the game. They came back from that to cut the lead to one, but then uh, A.J. Green missed a fadeaway jump shot with five seconds left, and that was the ball game. So, Eric, tell me more about how Bradley came back. Well, I, I think the, the, the main part of the Bradley's comeback probably came with around four minutes left in, in the game when they actually maintained their first uh, lead of the game when Dwayne uh, Latier Ogunle actually hit a three-pointer, giving um, them the 49 to a 48 lead. And then the kind of way that they maintained that lead was actually uh, from the free throw line. Uh, Laudiero Gunle, he actually made four, all four of the three, three free throws that he shot, and then he also made the final two. So without, without his work in the final minutes, uh, Bradley would have not, they would have not been able to complete the comeback. So going off of that, Connor, how do you think Northern Iowa fell apart? Yeah, so I mean, they led by as many as 18 points in the second half. That's because Northern Iowa is a team that likes to grind you down with their pace and physicality. And in the first half, it was working to perfection. Bradley couldn't get a bucket. They couldn't find a rhythm. Uh, but not only that, Northern Iowa was shooting the lights out in the first half. They went 5 from 11 from downtown compared to Bradley's 1 for 9. That was a huge difference in the first half. Uh, then in the second half, that shooting evened out a little bit more. Bradley did get the rhythm. They got hot uh, and able, were able to get that comeback going. Uh, and then the player for Northern Iowa, who was the star all game, was A.J. Green, their freshman. Um, he scored 23 points. He was on fire in the first half. He was trying to hold off Bradley in that second half while they were making that comeback. And he did it for a while, but in the end, they needed somebody else to step up. Nobody else did. Uh, and that's why Northern Iowa uh, fell apart at the end. So, Eric, with um, Bradley winning the game, their players were given some awards. Take me through those awards. Uh, sure. So, for... Um, the most outstanding player of the MVC tournament, it was actually awarded to freshman uh, Elijah Childs. He had 12 points and he had a lot, and he had a lot of uh, critical points down the stretch towards uh, the end of the game. And also a part of the all tournament team for Bradley was uh, starting fre uh, freshman forward Elijah Childs. And also Nate Cannell, who had a rather quiet game uh, during this game. He only hit one three, but that three was a real, a real big difference maker in Bradley's comeback. And also for uh, the other um, awards um, for the all tournament team, uh, Drake forward Tremel Murphy. He also received the honors, as well as UNI guard Wyatt Lowhouse and guard uh, AJ Green. Well, thank you, Connor, and thank you, Eric. Um, Bradley will go on to the NCAA tournament, and our reporter, Isabel Van Stadham, went to the post game press conference, and she has more on that. I'm Isabel Van Stadham with RSL at the championship game where Bradley has won with a score of 57 to 54. You and I maintained a steady lead until the last of the second half, where Bradley woke up and took the lead and won. You and I had maintained a steady lead in the first half of the game. You and I player AJ Green, who made 23 overall total points, says that, I love the way we started. The first half was great. It was the second half where Bradley took the lead. You and I coach Jacobson states that their offense was better than our defense in that stretch. In the press conference for Bradley, Coach Brian Wardle, speaking about the highs and lows of the game, that it was the story of our year, come up in one game, ups and downs. Elijah Childs on the success of their win, being that we kept our composure. Coach Wardle says, you can win any night, you can lose any night. Bradley, now with a championship title, will now go on to the NCAA tournament. 
This is Bradley's first championship win in Arch Madness. For RSL, I'm Isabel Van Stippen. Throughout the weekend, we try to give you an inside look on what happens at the court. And today, we want to give you a behind-the-scenes look at what happens here at the Enterprise Center. Amelia Ickes has more on that. The Loyola Ramblers may be back in Chicago, but Rambler Sports Locker is still here in St. Louis. Today we're going to take you behind the scenes and give you a tour of what it's like to be on the media here at a big tournament. I just came out of one of the floor access entrances down here on the media level, and I'm about to show you the layout of the floor. Right now I'm heading in the direction of the media workroom. Ahead, we're going to bump into RSL's own Ioana, Connor, and Kelsey, who are filming the next episode of Running With The Pack. To watch it, you can check out our IGTV channel on our Instagram, at Loyola RSL. On the left, we're passing the CBS Sports satellite vans and the ambulance on scene in case of player injuries during the final today. We're coming up now on another floor access entrance and further ahead is the media workspace where media meals are served and journalists and photojournalists are able to work when they are not sitting on press row. Walking down the hall takes you to the players' locker rooms and their entrance to the floor. To the left is the media interview room where press conferences are held after the game. Going inside, you can see the panel in front where players, coaches, and the moderators sit during interviews. Usually the losing team is interviewed first in here after a few minutes of cooling down time, while the winning team has the opportunity to celebrate in the locker room before being interviewed. Going back into the hallway, you can see a lot of St. Louis Blues hockey signs and memorabilia as you walk down. When the MVC tournament isn't in town, the Enterprise Center is home to the Blues. Further down, we're going to pass a lot of offices. Some serve as a center for MVC staff during the tournament, while head coaches use others before the game. The rest of the media level just has more offices and a private club for when the Blues are playing in town. We're going to head upstairs now to the press box using the service elevator. Exiting the elevator and walking to the right, we're going to come up to where all of us at Rambler Sports Locker have been stationed during the game. Eric Moran is currently filming highlights of tonight's game between Bradley and Northern Iowa. Thank you guys for tuning in to our 2019 coverage of the Arch Madness Championship. I'm Ioana Kekados from all of us at RSL. See you in Chicago.